Inside Science TV. I was 19. Playing in the waves in the ocean, I dove into a wave, which pushed me down into a sandbar where I snapped my neck. I injured my spinal cord at the C5 level, which means I have pretty good function of my biceps and my arms, uh, but no function of from about my elbows down. So I can move my arm around, but I can't move my hands or anything below that. Ian Burkhardt is a quadriplegic, confined to this wheelchair for most of the day. The hardest thing for me being a quadriplegic is my loss of independence. Um, there's a lot of things that I need to ask someone for help with now. But now Ian is helping researchers develop technology that could get him moving again. NeuroBridge is a technology that we've developed to link brain activity directly to movement. It reads a person's thoughts to help move paralyzed muscles. We're actually using a tiny chip in the motor cortex, the area responsible for movement in the brain, and we're actually decoding or deciphering those signals so we can tell what kind of movement uh, a person is thinking about and would like to, to actually achieve, and then we're taking those signals mapping them right to the muscles and allowing someone who's paralyzed to move again. Using this technology, Ian is the first quadriplegic person to move his fingers and his hand by just thinking about it. To do it, he had a chip implanted in his brain that reads electrical signals. These tiny little signals uh, are coming from the neurons that are firing, as we say, in the brain. These neurons are still sending the same signals it did before Ian's accident. Instead of the signals going to Ian's spine, they are now picked up by the chip in his brain. Once we are able to recognize those signals in the brain, uh, we're able to actually route them around the spinal cord injury in this case, and then translate the signals into a language that the muscles can understand. That signal is transmitted to a sleeve that is fitted around Ian's arm. It stimulates his muscles to move, activating the ones he is thinking about. And it all happens in a split second. In order for me to pick up the mug, I have to really concentrate on going into a rest state initially, just so I can kind of calm down the, my brain activity. And then I focus on extending my hand to open and extend all my fingers so I can get my hand around the mug. And then I focus on closing my hand as tight as I can. It's a major move forward for Ian, but neurosurgeon Darlene Lobel from the Cleveland Clinic believes there's still more work to be done. There are other similar technologies that involve brain implants of electrodes such as this. Now, some of these electrodes over a period of time will either stop working or they will not work as well. It will be important to see the long-term studies with NeuroBridge to know whether these electrodes continue to work and have stability over time. But for Ian, performing a simple task like this is something he hasn't done in four years. I'll remember that first moment uh, when we turned on the system uh, and Ian attempted to move his hand and he was actually was just trying to open and close his hand, uh, but he was able to do it that day and it was just an absolutely amazing moment. It was a surreal experience to see my hands moving, but I can't really feel my hand moving. Since I lacked the sensation on my hands, I had to re really rely on my sight, but knowing that I could control my hand to open and close and to pick something up was a great feeling. Ian is the researcher's first success with this technology. We believe this is the first time that uh, actual signals from within the brain have been linked to movement through the use of the muscles, the actual muscles of someone who's paralyzed. These promising results set the stage for testing NeuroBridge on more patients. The biggest thought for me is just the sense of hope for the future to see if they can take some technology like this and push it along forward. Science moving forward for Ian and others like him. This is Inside Science TV. Inside Science TV. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.